Welcome to the video where we will be discussing the morphology of blood clots or thrombi. Uh, what do they look like? What do blood clots and thrombi look like? Well, just to do a quick overview of some basic heart physiology, in arteries are higher pressure and they usually take blood away from the heart. Veins are lower pressure and they usually bring blood back to the heart. So we have here the superior vena cava. So blood is coming back this way. We have the inferior vena cava here. And blood's coming back up to this way. They enter into the right atrium. They pass the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. And the right ventricle then squeezes and pushes blood up into the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries then take blood to the lungs where the blood is oxygenated and CO2 is released out into the atmosphere. Oxy oxygenated blood then comes back through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium and blood comes back here. And then once the blood is squeezed or filled into the left ventricle through the bicuspid or mitral valve, then the big mother left ventricle is the one that has the most work to do. It pushes blood up into the aorta and down through the whole body. And just to remind you that, let's say this is the bottom of an aorta and they have it has some offshoot. Well then the, the art, arterial blood supply that is oxygenated then comes down and slows down in velocity and speed and there's a capillary bed here or a capillary is the transition from an artery to a vein and there's the cells here and this is where oxygen and nutrients inside the blood diffuse out into the tissues, the extracellular matrix and supplies the needed nutrients and oxygen to the cells picks up wastes and CO2, carries them back into the blood, up the veins, back into the heart, and the cycle continues, hopefully for a good 100 years or so. So your blood clots can form, blood, blood clots can form anywhere in the cardiovascular system. They can form on the heart valves. They can form in the bottom of the ventricles and the atriums. They can form in arteries. They can form in uh, veins. They can form in the veins. They can form in the capillaries. They can form in the capillaries. Right here in the capillaries. And let's say that you have a blood clot that, start, that starts forming here. Okay. Now what's interesting is that in arteries, blood clots will form retrograde. They'll, they'll, they'll grow or expand toward the heart. They'll go against the flow because the flow of blood's this way. They'll, they'll expand growing that way. And in the veins, the, let's say there's a blood clot forming here the blood clot will expand in direction of blood flow so opposite of arteries but just remember that blood clots expand always towards the heart so they'll do retrograde in arteries and anti-grade or towards the blood flow in veins they can form in capillaries blood or thrombuses thrombi sorry and blood clots can form anywhere so what happens is they attach right here to the vascular wall the blood clots will attach and if one piece right here let's say let's say this part right here this tip of this breaks off and starts shooting down the pipe that is called an embolus emboli we'll talk about and then, then they have all these names for all these emboli that break off and, and shoot down the pipe and clog somewhere and start causing damage but we will talk about these in later videos but for terminology's sake a thrombi or a blood clot is is a formation of 
you know the the coagulation cascade or you know the process that we just talked about in the last few videos and an embolus is a piece of that blood clot breaking off and sliding down the pipe and on this case if it was on the blood on the vein side it would shoot back towards the heart so emboli can have let's talk about the morphology what they look like lines of zon lines of zon only occur in strong only in stronger blood flow areas so in arteries uh, in high blood flow areas there are these lines of zon they do occur the lines of zon do occur in uh, like slower moving blood flow areas but they're not as prominent and in veins there's just you know if you have a vein here uh, there's just a blood clot it's just normally because the blood is moving so so slowly that you don't really get these lines of zon these different margins and you can see here how these lines of zon are kind of distinct different you know layers of 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 platelets and red blood cells and so the darker parts are the red blood cells so you have red blood cells here you have red blood cells here you have red blood cells here and then these whiter part is platelets these are platelets and fibrin and you can see platelets and fibrin plates it platelets and fibrin platelets and fibrin and so this is good to know especially in forensic pathology when you want to know whether uh, you know if this thrombus occurred in this blood vessel before or after death after death you do not get these lines of zon in the arteries in the art areas of major blood flow but you do get them um, before death so these these are this is good to know if you're a forensic pathologist lines of zon and you can see how there's a blood clot here and they've dissected through this picture comes from the pathology uh, department at the University of Utah Medical School so give credit to them and then another term that we need to know is moral thrombi moral thrombi or are thrombi occurring in heart chambers or in the aortic lumen there's well in this case these pictures are taken from a research article where they were discussing some of the surgical ways of removing thrombi and these pictures are actually in the renal artery so it's usually moral thrombi usually denote or are talked about in thrombi occurring in the heart chambers and in the aortic lumen but sometimes you can get moral thrombi that are offshoots but for test purposes you always want to put moral thrombi in heart chambers and aortic lumen so what can what causes these moral thrombi well abnormal myocardial contractions that usually result in arrhythmias, dilated cardiomyopathy, or myocardial infarction or heart attacks. So inside the heart, you can have there uh, you get moral thrombi by myocardial contraction, abnormal myo myocardial contraction, or the inside of the heart, the endomyocardial layer is injured, usually by myocarditis or a catheter trauma. A lot of times they'll stick catheters inside the heart or scopes to see what's going on, and that can cause a that can cause a blood clot because you are damaging the endomyocardial layer, and that promotes, you know, the whole inflammation process and promotes, you know, the the blood clot formation. And inside, um, what causes aortic thrombosis is ulcerated atherosclerotic plaques and aneurysmal dilatation so if you have an aneurysm inside your uh, aorta that's going to cause problems with laminar blood flow like we talked about in previous videos and that will cr create stasis or turbulence blood flow which is part of Virco's triad and that will cause will promote 
aortic thrombosis. But in this case, they stick. In this case, this is the aortic lumen, and they are sticking a little scope in there. And you can see this little blood clot here, and you can see this blood clot here, and this is. Uh, not a scope, but an ultrasound, and you can start. You can see the blood clot here, blood clot here, blood clot here, and a blood clot here. So moral thrombi, thrombi that occurs in heart chambers or in the aortic lumen.